Hi, welcome back. So in this video, I just want to walk through some examples of functions in x and y. So these are three dimensional functions with x, y, and z, where x and y are our inputs. So you'll notice here that I already have everything set up. So we're using some images that come from our textbook. This is the Active Calculus Multivariable Textbook. It's available at activecalculus.org. And I took these images from the textbook just to give us some good models to look at. So the idea here is that we're going to look at the 3D models along with the graphs of the level curves. Those are like the contour plots. And we're just going to compare some things and make some points. So for these first two examples, we have very similar looking situations. So we have these cup-like shapes. The first one is x squared plus y squared. And we've actually talked about this shape in some other videos already. And so you'll notice that the level curves are circles. Then comparing this to sort of the upside down cup, we have the same contours, but they're colored differently. And so I just want to talk a little bit about what the colors represent and just the like distance between each of the contours. So the first note that I have here is that contours that are closer together typically represent a faster rate of change. So if someone has made a contour plot, it's usually done with each level of z, like at the, like they do z of 1, z of 2, z of 3, etc. And so when you look at we go from one contour to the next, you can look at the distance between them. So the closer they are together, the faster or the steeper the rate of change that is happening. We use the same process in like topological maps that represent elevation. And so you'll see something similar here. So if we look at our first shape, the cup that's facing upward, the first, the distance between the first two level curves, or I guess from the origin to that first one, is kind of a lot. And that represents a slow rate of change at the beginning. Then as we go through the rest of them, it gets a lot steeper because the curves get closer together. And you can see that as we continue to go out from the origin, we are getting steeper and steeper going up. And that's why those level curves are getting closer together. We see the same thing for the second example, where things start off kind of flat, and then they get very steep. So we do flat, and then we get steeper down. So this first part is sort of close together, sorry, they're kind of far apart, and then we get close together at the end. So these two examples here have the exact same contours, but just with different colors. So I've written this second note here, and this is that different colors represent height. So we have a gradient of colors here. So we start like at a pink and go to this darker blue. And so the idea is that the bluish color is the low, the low points of the height. Then we have some sort of medium. I'm using this like maroonish purpley color for the medium. And then we have pink for the high, the high heights. So I apologize if these colors aren't good for you or if they are hard to see. There are other color palettes that we can use that are often easier to distinguish between, but this is just the ones they use in the textbook, so I'm using them here. And I apologize if they are hard for you to understand or look at. And sorry, that wasn't really what I meant. I just apologize if you're um, not able to see the color distinctions. Okay, so looking at our two graphs that have this similar contour plots, the main difference is the colors. So if we look on the outside of the second one, we have this dark blue, and this is to represent a low height. So that's around the outside here. We have something that is low. So as we go further away, we're sort of flat on the Z. The Z is zero out there. And then as we get closer in, we have this pink, which is to represent this high part at the end. This is in contrast to the first example, which starts low with the blue in the center, and we go out to pink on the outsides, and that's to match the shape that we see on the graph, where we start low and we go up to high. So the colors are just meant to give us another way to look at the heights and to give us more information with the contours. Okay, then for the rest of this, I just want to point out some different types of shapes you might see. So there's lots of cool stuff we can do in three dimensions and cool things. I just want to show you some examples. So this first one is a cone. So we just add the square root on the x squared plus y squared. And this means that the rate of change is suddenly constant. So as we go out, all of these level curves are the same distance apart. And so the rate of change is constant, which is pretty cool. 
Then down here we have a bunch of other neat shapes. So we have this one that looks like a saddle. That's this first one here. Um, I like to think of it as like a Pringle chip, which is kind of fun. Um, but this is just x squared minus y squared. So rather than plus, it's a minus, and it makes this saddle or Pringle chip shape. Okay, so as we go further out on the x-axis, the positive x-axis and the negative x-axis, we're getting pinker colors, which represents these sort of higher peaks on the shape. And then if we look on the y-axis, oops, if we look on the y-axis, we're getting in the blue, and this represents sort of the dips that we have along the y. So this is just one way that you can look at the contours and it should match up with the shape you have. Then I just wanted to include these other shapes because they're kind of fun as functions go. So it, you can just see some examples of different things we can have and the neat stuff that happens with that. So I just wanted to include those examples to show you that these things can get really complicated and we can talk about lots of different looking surfaces in three dimensions now that we have that as an option. Okay, so hopefully that just gave you a little bit more information about contours and how they might be used when we have functions of x and y as the inputs. Thanks so much for watching, and I will talk to you in the next one.